Hi, my name is Shauna Canino. I'm a solutions consultant and a regional account manager here at Healthy Careers. I've been with them for about eight years. Today, um, I have the privilege of working with employers and recruiters in the Western United States. Recruiters have to be the experts in every specialty they are recruiting for, which is hard to juggle. Um, each specialty is different, but there are strategies and approaches to these recruiting processes that can be applied across all specialties. Today, I am excited to be talking with Tammy Hager, one of my clients, about how she tackles specialty and passive recruiting. Tammy is the Executive Director at Recru of Recruitment and Privileging for Surgical Affiliates Management Group. Thanks for taking the time to talk with me today, Tammy. We're excited to have you with us. Thank you so much. It's fun to be with you guys. I appreciate you having me here. Yes, thank you. Um, you have a very impressive background in the field. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and your current role? Sure. I, I am a little different than most of the folks that work in recruitment across the country. Um, I've worked for two large healthcare systems in my career. And the first healthcare system was based in Virginia. And I was actually in operations. I ran all of the physician clinics across the state as well as some of the hospital departments. So my background is actually an operational background and I, I started the in-house physician recruitment department there. Um, from there, I actually went to practice link, which is I know one of the competitors for you guys, but I was there for seven years and learned a lot about recruitment across the country with all of the different healthcare systems and all of the recruiters, which gave me a different type of background with my operations and with my recruitment. And then I went to Mercy Health System, which large healthcare system based out of St. Louis, Missouri, and really looking at how we were recruited across different states um, and across um, different specialties across those different states really helped us change how we did recruitment across across our health system. And I'm at SAMG now, we are different. We are a smaller company. We are more focused on hiring surgicalists across the country. So I've had to take what I do with physician recruitment the past few years and really narrow it down to specific specialties and understanding it's even a quicker type of recruitment for us here. So Having that operational background, I think, has helped me really understand why we do things the way we do in recruitment, whether it's in a healthcare system or in a company like Sanji, where we have to really be up and running with a position within 90 days. That's great. That's great. Yes, you do have a lot. You have a lot of experience in not only recruiting yourself, but also building teams and the processes of recruiting underneath multiple specialties. How do you go about structuring a recruitment team and to better serve these organizations struggling to recruit for these specialties? Sure, um, you know, it, it's been different for each healthcare system, but one thing that I have really found and even here at SAMG is really pairing physician behavior with the personalities of the recruiters because some recruiters have specific personalities that talk better and learn how to talk with specific specialties. And when you pair those up, it really can speed up how they source physicians, how they talk with physicians, how they keep them in the pipeline for future positions, but really the day-to-day the -day discussions that they have, it makes a huge difference in those discussions. That is a great strategy, something that's new um, that we haven't necessarily heard. And these are great ideas for structuring your team. Could you share your marketing strategies you use to recruit for these different specialties? Sure. So everywhere I've gone, I really look at how do we approach recruitment? So the first thing to do is actually to build a recruitment plan. And I know people talk about a recruitment plan, but it really is looking at each position and what is the plan for each of those positions. Understanding the environment, um, of how many physicians there are in the country should be a part of that plan. So there are different sites that I go to to find this information, but if I'm looking for say a urologist in Illinois, I really take a look at what is that position about? What is that physician gonna get to do? Who are they gonna get to work with? And then I really think about who am I going to target for these positions? I know there's only about 9,200 urologists across the country from the data that I see. I also know that 55% of those are over the age of 55. So understanding those numbers and then targeting physicians who have 
ties to those areas or their families have ties to those areas and having the data behind that really makes you build out a recruitment plan so that you know how to source these physicians, whether it's through emails, phone calls, however you're doing it. Um, it's really important to know that data behind your recruitment plan and to build out those plans for each of your positions because every one of those, it, it's going to be different based on specialty, based on the number of positions, uh, physicians that there are across the country, and then based on each recruitment uh, unique needs for their healthcare systems or the companies that they work uh, with. And then in addition, tracking results is important. So understanding where you're getting your physicians and how you're building that pipeline of physicians and specialties, depending on what you're looking for with your organization. So using the data behind this is really important because you can look and see at what's working, uh, really what's working for each of those positions. You can see what's working for you as the organization because you may have a plan, but it's gonna be different in another location. So tracking those results is important because you'll need to switch your plan. You've gotta come up with, this is what I'm doing to start with. I'm gonna really source here, here, and here, but if that's not working, what's my next step? So building those steps in with that plan is really important. Absolutely, that's great. Now to get to these best candidates, you have to first know what you're looking for. If you're recruiting for the multiple specialties across the board, I'm sure it's difficult to keep track of all of these and needs and recruitments, and especially if you're by yourself, but how do you develop a plan for the ideal candidate by specialty? Sure. Um, one of the things that we look at is I meet with the physicians in our areas that we're recruiting for so that we can decide what is the ideal candidate for each of these positions. So one of, the, one of the great ways to do it is if you just recruited someone, meet with that physician and talk about why did you come here? Um, finding out the reasons is so important, but really understanding, you know, what are the clinical considerations that you need to share with candidates? Um, what type of licensing and certifications are they gonna need? How long is it gonna take them to get licensed? Really understanding their educational background and experience level, because if you need a truly experienced physician, you know you're gonna waste your time if you're gonna be advertising or doing marketing campaigns to residents or fellows because they are not experienced. They're just coming out of training. And a lot of times they need someone that's gonna be able to mentor them to be able to grow into positions. So if you need someone that really has experience, then you don't wanna waste your time marketing to residents. And it, it, it kind of makes them feel bad too because they're applying for those positions. And then you're like, oh, you're not, you're not qualified for this position. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does make a huge difference. And you, know, you look at what is the ideal profile. And marrying all of that together really makes, um, it really makes for a great call then that you have with candidates as your marketing. It mm -hmm. also helps you write your marketing ads so that these candid candidates can really understand from their perspective what you're looking for. They can see how they would fit or they can see how they might not fit for this particular position. So it really helps from the organizational side and it helps from the candidates that you're talking with to understand who your ideal candidates are. Very interesting, that's great insight. These are some great takeaways for other recruiters on forming the ideal candidate profile. Um, when you start searching for this candidate, how do you get to know them personally? Um, what do you think are the most important aspects of placing someone in the right position? So it, it's, it's kind of like anything else, getting to know the candidate with your conversations is important and understanding what are they looking for now? Um, what's important to them? So you know, if they're just coming out of residency or fellowship, you know, what are they looking for? Are they wanting to make a lot of money? Are, what, is the, what is their family consideration? So what type of situation do they wanna live in that's convenient or good for their families? If they have children, what are the schools like? So really going through and asking some of those questions is important because you can get a good understanding of if, if it's gonna be a good fit with any particular position that you have open. You, will, you don't wanna waste the candidate's time and try and fit them in a position or a location that they're not interested in. So really getting to know that candidate up front is important and having those conversations and just being honest and asking them up front, 
it really does help. And they appreciate it too, because you start developing that relationship so that if it is not a good fit at this time, you actually maintain that relationship and keep them in your pipeline so that when you do have a position open, there's a possibility that they may fit and they want to come back and talk with you so you can market out to them again. And it really does make a difference. Great. And that kind of goes into my next question is during the search, um, do you do research on candidates or you have non-starters you look uh, for to prevent yourself and your hiring team from wasting their time on these candidates? I do. So um, I've, I've had a pre-screening tool that my folks have used on for years. And the pre-screening tool actually goes into when we get the CV, we go in and we kind of go ahead and verify their licenses. Are they board certified? Are they board eligible? There's, low, there's sites where you can go ahead and do this. Um, when you're asking them questions or you have them on the phone, you can ask them about their malpractice because it's nice to hear what they say about it. You can actually verify all of that information, but it's how they talk about it and how forthcoming are they about their malpractice backgrounds. Um, mm -hmm. Also thinking about um, anything that you could do before the call, it makes an easier conversation because you already know a little bit about the candidate and they feel that you know about them and they're more comfortable talking with you when you've done some of that preliminary check with a pre-screening. Definitely, so you're prepared for that. Well, we have definitely learned so much today um, from you and that you're doing your job fantastic. Um, each position that you are recruiting for takes a ton of time and work to fill. How do you manage your day, your day-to-day -day activities? So it's funny, folks that know me <laughs> across the country, they know I always say, say plan your work and work your plan. So. You have to come to work every day with a plan. You have to understand what are the priorities? What positions are my priorities today? What do I need to work on today? What do I need to feel first? So it's interesting because if you look at the number of people that you're talking with, you really wanna look at how can you narrow down the number of people that you talk with using the pre-screening tool and then also being able to, to understand how many valid interviews are you going to get as a result of your position. So you want to narrow that down. So part of your plan every day is how many people are you going to really talk with that day that really fit in a role that you need and schedule those people and schedule time on your calendar. Um, you can't just come in and just think, oh, I think I'll just look for doctors today. Well, how are you going to do it? Schedule time for each of the tools that you use so that you can concentrate on these are my priorities and I'm gonna use these tools for my priorities. And I know this is where I generally, the source where I find my physicians. If you schedule that time every day, it really does generate candidate flow that you would not believe. And a good example, I'll just share an example. Last week, we had a new position that came up of a new program that we're gonna be starting in Virginia. It's kind of funny. So the first thing I did was went to my own CRM and I went through and I chose a certain number of general surgeons who do acute surgeries. I sent them an initial email explaining the service that we're, we're beginning to open, the healthcare system that we're gonna be working with. And I knew that I needed to be that targeted. Out of all of the responses I got, which were quite a few, I ended up with nine great interviews this week. Really? It's amazing. We only need three positions, but out of the people that responded, we narrowed down to nine really good candidates that were interviewing and beginning to move forward with these candidates. So when you come to work and you think about this is my priority today and you go through the steps of the tools that you use and you schedule that time to source those candidates and then schedule the, the interviews with them so that you mindfully are understanding who you're talking with and use the pre-screening tool, it makes a huge difference in how your day flows and how the, how the candidates reach out to you as well. Definitely. And that's fantastic news. We love hearing that. So um, that's a great story from last week as well. Um, <laughs> thank you for sharing. Um, we've talked a lot today about different strategies pre for preparing for and conducting searches for your active candidates. Um, how are you using passive recruiting within your overall strategy and managing those tasks on a daily? So it's interesting, and I've, I've actually taught recruiters over the years, you have to be able to reach out to active and passive candidates. In doing that, it starts with the marketing information that you're using, your job postings. How do you attract both active and passive candidates with those job postings? And using tools like Healthy Careers is important because 
you really when you have when you have those job postings out on the site, physicians are looking are looking at that. Active candidates are going to always be applying for those. Passive candidates are going to read them and they're going to save them and they're going to go back and they're going to read them later. So when you're thinking about active and passive candidates, the passive candidates have a lot more to lose. They already have a job. They may be interested in looking, but what are you going to get them to do to reach out to you? So with those passive candidates, you have to really tell them some of the things that they're going to get to do in those job postings. When you're sending out marketing campaigns or emails, you've got to do the same thing. You've got to get their attention with the, with the subject line. You've got to be able to, to have the email read so that they can see themselves in that position, which will get them to call you to actually discuss that position. So making it personalized and not just sending these blast emails is important. The other thing, and I love this with Healthy Careers, is being able to use the CV uh, search because I don't go in and just do searches in general. You can set them up so that you get messages and emails from candidates. But what I love about doing the CV search is I can actually go through a CV at a time with people that have just recently registered all the way back to months back and look at each of those candidates on the, on the main screen and, and just think about do they fit with us? What's the specialty? How many years have they been in practice? And then if it's something that you want, someone you want to reach out to, being able to download that CV is important. So it takes a little bit of time to do that, but it's a more targeted way to reach those passive candidates rather than just sending a blast email out and getting yeah. everyone. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you again for sharing all of this great information with us today. We really appreciate it. And but before we wrap up, I do have one final question for you. Um, we want to know, are there any silver bullet strategies <laughs> that recruiters or you, we should utilize that you found the most success with? So it's really funny. I think people are always looking for a sil silver bullet, but I will tell you, there's two things that are, are, are really the silver bullet. It's having a process and being consistent and having a plan and working your plan every day. That's really the silver bullet because if you are consistent and you work your plan every day, you get results and you continue to get results on a day-to-day -day basis. Simple, right? Two, two answers, that's it. Well, thank that's you, Tammy, it. very, very much. We appreciate your time today. It's my pleasure. Thank you guys for having me.